I want to offer a few words about constables in general. Now, in theory, I believe, just like the, you know, the entire judicial system, uh, that the idea of constables are a good idea. I believe it's a good idea. Constables are democratically elected offices, so therefore they are held accountable to the people versus, say, the sheriff's deputies. The sheriff's deputies are appointed at the behest of the sheriff. So the sheriff is elected, but not his deputies. His deputies are not held to account to the people since they are appointed, but not elected. The only way the voting public can hold a deputy accountable is to kick the sheriff out. But to hold a constable uh, held to account for his uh, crimes would be the same way to kick him out when it comes to the ballot box. So I like the idea. In theory, uh, on paper, constables are a better idea than just having one person elected and then they appoint whoever they want to appoint. Uh, unfortunately, only 10% of Kentucky's population vote. And voting is the least you can do politically. If you don't vote, that means you're not calling your representatives, you're not running for office, you're not paying attention to what's going on, you're not writing bills, you're, you're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. You're basically maybe just got a job trying to get a little bit of crumbs and then, I don't know, just talking about honey boo-boo. So uh, since most Kentuckians do not even vote, then the chance of even elected politicians being held to account for their behavior is minimal. And, and why not? Why is only 90% of Kentuckians vote? I think ignorance, crappy education, 100% compliance, you know. So there are, are as many constables in every single county in Kentucky as there are magistrates. So in Laurel County, there are six districts. There are six magistrates, and there are six constables. And so in, uh, for every magisterial district, every magistrate district, there's a constable. It's one-to-one -one ratio. And the power that a constable has is the same power that a sheriff has in their district. So they have, you know, ultimate, absolute power. The sheriff is the number one law enforcer uh, in the county. And within their respective district, the constable has the, you know, the same ultimate, absolute law enforcement power. So you have the sheriff that can do anything in Laurel County. Uh, and then you have six constables in each different district that could do not anything, right, within, uh, within reason. Constables are essentially many sheriffs in their respective magisterial district. They're like many sheriffs. Constables can help the sheriff if the sheriff uh, wants their help, like, say, in other districts. But that's up to the sheriff. In fact, the sheriff, because of posse comitatus, can even deputize regular folks. Right? Just grab a couple city folk and some farmers, just regular citizens. You're a deputy. We need to, you know, I need your help to go catch this criminal. So the constable has, you know, uh, ultimate jurisdiction in their own district. But if they go outside that district, it can only be by, you know, uh, permission of the sheriff. Usually they're all together. They all work, you know, as one um, but it's up to the sheriff, okay? And the sheriff is the executive branch. I think that's important, too, meaning the judge executive is above the sheriff. It's the executive. Laurel County, Kentucky has six constable districts, and constables do not get a salary. And I think this is where some of the problem with constables come into play. So uh, constables are paid on a fees-based system. They don't get any money. Uh, they can be reimbursed $200 a month out of the general fund, out of the taxes that the county collects uh, for any expenses they make in regards to their job. Uh, but the way that constables get paid is by the fees that they collect from serving warrants, serving subpoenas, etc. It's a fees-based system. And constables are actually capped out at $71,000 per year in the total amount of fees that they're allowed to collect. So the fact that constables are capped out at 71000 per year gives me the indication that you can actually make a decent living being a constable. 71000 but that's a good living. Many times constables have to use their own vehicles, and many times constables have to get permission to get the red and blue lights and sirens installed on their vehicles. 
And I think that's the reason why there's a problem. Just think of Justified, the TV show. You had the constable on Justified, which was played by Patton Oswald, and that constable was just an incompetent buffoon, just a, a boob, a turd, a, a total dumbass, okay? And the problem is usually the sheriff's office likes to be, you know, the top dog. They want to beat the perp up and get the glory, and the sheriff and the deputies are all on one team, and it's all, you know, all behind the, the, the captain. And so they treat constables who have actually more power than the sheriff's deputies in their own district. They treat them like second-class citizens. So it's this so Of course, men have egos, and because of this hierarchy... Unfortunately, it can get an insecure constable who feels the need to go above and beyond the call of duty, to do double of what they should be doing just to show that they're worthy of you know, their job, of their title, of their badge, of their uniform, of their car, and possibly if they work hard for the red and blue siren, for the red and blue lights and for the sirens. So, you know, they, they need to show the work to show that they can do the same job that the sheriff and the deputies do. So they feel the need to go above and beyond. And then also if, like, you know, if you're a constable but you don't have a vehicle that looks like a police car, you're just driving in the old beat-up, you know, pickup, and you're like, hey, I'm going to arrest you. Well, it looks like you're getting arrested by just a guy, and you're like, ah, get out of here. You ain't nobody. And then that'll piss them off more. It's like, hey, I'm, I'm a police officer. I'm thing I want to mention as a side note, uh, Bobby Joe Smith, he ran for constable two years ago, so he's only been a constable for two years. When I was reading about him, I out of all the questionnaires, when he ran for primary, he ran against like eight Republicans and wound up winning and then beat the Democrat in the general election. He didn't fill out any questionnaires for the primary. He didn't fill out any questionnaires for the general election. So he didn't say why he wanted it, what his uh, intentions, what his purpose, what his you know, what he's going to do as constable. He didn't say why he wanted state power, why he wanted to carry a gun, why he wanted to be a law enforcer. And really it's obvious. I mean, most people who apply to be a police officer, I mean, they want power. That's, that's what Bobby Joe Smith wanted. He wanted power for power's sake. And absolute power corrupts absolutely. So just wanting power isn't good enough.